Beloved in the Lord, let me tell you something. The fact that we all come to beat here doesn't mean we are united. Unity is not a gathering of people. That's not what unity means. Hallelujah. We need to have oneness. We need to have one mind. If we, we, if we, we, <coughs> hallelujah. If we do not agree, if there is no agreement, if there is no oneness, if there is no harmony, it's going to be very difficult for us to grow. Because one is, grow, well, you know, when you go and water, somebody comes and then he does something else to the plant. Amen. You will put water, oh yeah, I'm watering it, and the plant will be nice. By the time you come tomorrow, somebody has put Omo there. The next day, by the time you come, somebody has cut it. It will never grow. You can plant hundred times. And it will still not grow. But when we are united and when we understand, when we are united in the faith and we understand what we're doing, then we're going to see growth. I want us to really come to that point of understanding that as Christians, we have to be united. What is unity? Unity simply means the state of being one. It also means oneness of mind, feeling, etc. As among a number of persons, concord, harmony, or agreement. So, we, you know, the thing is that we can congregate like we are doing now. But still, if we congregate without unity, without uniting, without understanding one another, without being one, we, there will be still chaos amongst us. So the fact that we come together every Sunday doesn't mean that we are united. Hallelujah. Are we good? Do you know that we can come here every Sunday, but we may be fighting against one another too? And that really baffles me. I, seriously. I don't... Hello? <laughs> you know, we say that and the two shall be one. But do you know that there are some twos that are not one? There are some two that have created a boxing ring. Every day. Hallelujah. They live together. They eat together. But they fight. There is always misunderstanding, disagreement. There is no oneness. So the fact that you come together doesn't mean that you are united. But our strength is in the fact that we not only come together, but we are united. Hallelujah. So as Christians, it's important. Look, let's go to Genesis. I, I would just want to let you see this. Let's go to Genesis chapter 11. Verse 6. The Lord said, If as one people speaking the same language, they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. When we, get, when we are united, everything is possible. God had to scatter them by really uh, um, messing up their language. God had to do that. Because the moment that happened, now this one doesn't understand this. This one doesn't, this one say bring mortar, then he will go and bring something else. Then he will get angry and slap him. Because he doesn't understand what he's saying. Hallelujah. 
this one says this, and this one says that, this one says this, this one. So they scattered. Because they were, so the projects they had planned to do, they couldn't achieve. The projects ahead of us this year is to grow. If we are not united, we cannot grow. There are some I've reserved for Thursday. Oh, yeah, there, there's a, the, because we'll be teaching this on Thursdays as well, where it becomes very practical. And then, so make your notes and prepare your questions and your comments. Hallelujah. So that when we meet on Thursday, we can go deep into those. Hallelujah. Because now you can't talk. But on Thursday, you can express yourself. If we don't pay attention, we cannot grow. Because if we have to grow, then our vocabulary should be one. We have to speak the same language. Hallelujah. Not in the same language as in probably we all say, speak in Ewe or we all speak in Ga or we all speak in... No, I'm talking about we can say it in different languages, but it should be the same message. Hallelujah. If we, if I, for example, if, if you say something, or if I say something, and someone comes to you, he is not here, but he comes here, and then he comes to you, the truth is that what you will say to the person will be exactly what I will say to the person, because we have the same mindset. We have the same mindset. We are focusing on the same thing. For example, we are saying this year it's a year of growth. We are going to grow. We have seen the four growth, uh, uh, growth goals that we have set for ourselves according to what the Bible has given to us and we are pursuing that. Hallelujah. So as we pursue that, what we need to really understand is that anyone who comes in at any given time or if we go for evangelism and we bring people in, those people wouldn't have to have a different mindset. As they have come in, look, let me tell you something. Um, we can have two plans. Let me just pull something out of this place. I don't know, maybe some people get angry, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> these, look, we want these to grow. Hallelujah. If we, have to, if we want them to really grow, we need to, these are artificial so they cannot grow. But if we want these to grow, we need to put the right amount of water, the right amount. If we need to fertilize it, put the right amount of fertilizer. If we put the right amount of, uh, we give it the right amount of sunshine, we give it, if you give it that, it's going to grow. And everyone is going to happy. We'll be happy about this plan. But if we don't do or we don't give it the right thing, they cannot grow. So you come back and you see them in the same way and you get angry. Jesus got angry when he went, wanted a, a, a fruit and he couldn't get it. Hallelujah. Jesus also gave a parable about uh, a, a, a farmer that has planted a farm. And he said the owner, when he went there and he saw that tree not bearing, he said, cut it off. Hallelujah. If you don't grow this year, maybe God is going to cut you off. Hallelujah. Look, let me tell you something. Watch this. If you go to your farm, you, have, you know about farming, so you come. If you go to your farm and you see that there is a plant there that has a disease that can contaminate the others, what will you do? Oh, you will be cut. You do what? Uproot and then burn it somewhere. Hallelujah. Because if you allow that to stand, other trees are going to get infected. And if other trees get infected, your farm will not grow. This is not cemetery, it's church. Say amen. amen. Uh, 
Hallelujah. This is no cemetery. Why is it that some things you jump, but other things you... Hallelujah. So this farmer has to open his eyes. And let me tell you something. God has opened his eyes. This is God's farm. And God's eyes are open. And God has given us a task. God says that we should grow. And he's given us the points, the areas that we should grow. God is not going to sit down unless the farmer doesn't do the right thing. But if he, I mean, when, when Jesus, Jesus said that when the owner went and he saw what was happening, he said, cut it off. Then the husband's man or the, the, uh, the one who was taking care, the caretaker, now said, boss, please, give me one more year. Hallelujah. I will really fertilize it. And if, if, if after all that, it's still not growing, then it's not my fault. I did what I have to do. Hallelujah. Yes. <laughs> Your amen is too weak. Yes. It looks like what I'm saying, you are not happy. Yes. If you are not happy, just don't be diseased. You don't have to be diseased. Because if you are diseased, when the owner comes, somebody says cut, but I like that one. How prude. Because in, <laughs> what does the Bible say in Job? Even the tree stump, the one that has been cut, he didn't say if he gets rain. So at the scent of rain, he has hope that he will grow again. Hallelujah. There are some trees, if they grow again, they will still contaminate. Oh yeah, it's, it's true. There is a, okay. There's a disease in cocoa. It's called swollen shoots. It's a viral disease. The only thing you can do, there's no medication to treat it. If it comes, if it, you find it on your farm, you don't only uproot that one, but all the nearby, nearby trees. You don't understand me. Hey, Mumra, yes, come. No, we are your farmer. Hey. Swollen shoots come. Stand here. Come, surround him. Diseased, all diseased. This one is diseased, but it's dangerous. Move a little bit. Uh -huh. This one is diseased. This is the swollen shoot plant. It's, uh, this one is contaminated with swollen shoot. If you go to the farm and you cut this one, you haven't done anything because it's gone into the roots. It, the tree itself might come back so it will contaminate the others. Or sometimes, by the time you find out that this is diseased, he has really contaminated these ones already. Go into the spirit, you understand me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. He has already contaminated. So if this tree is taking off. These ones have to go as well. You say, wow. These ones have to go as well. Because if these ones don't go, they're already contaminated. They will contaminate the others. So, instead of you, come. Instead of you taking the four out, you think this one is very contaminated, uh, I mean, disease, so you take it out, it's gone. That's fine. There's no problem. You can sit down. <laughs> okay. But these ones are also contaminated, and you didn't take them off. Now, they, 
become full-blown diseases. I mean, they get full. And then they begin, this one begins to contaminate another three. This one, another three. This one, another three. Three, three, three is what? Hallelujah. Plus three. So if you are taking four, hallelujah, how many would have saved? You would have saved a lot more because you have said three here, three here, three here. So you would have saved nine. But because you did not, hallelujah, now look at all this. So this farmer has to do his work well. Hallelujah. But we pray that the disease in church will not be viral. Maybe it's a bacteria. So we can spray it. And then when we spray it and we kill whatever bacteria was there, then this one can grow well. But if it is viral, we can't do anything. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So you see that there are some that with spraying and with good treatment, you see them growing again. But there are some forever. But this is all to be done so that the farm will grow well. Listen to me. Every farmer, and I have seen it too many times, if you ask anybody in Coco, he will tell you, that is why even the government at the moment is cutting a lot. If we have allowed... <coughs> ourselves to cut a little bit of the trees that were infected, then we could have saved a lot of the cocoa in Ghana. But we didn't. So it kept spreading. It kept spreading. Now a lot has to die. Hallelujah. Jesus said in Matthew 12, 25. Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, every kingdom divided against itself will be ruined. And every city or household divided against itself will not stand. If we will grow and we will not die, then we need to be united, not divided. And therefore, each and every one of us would have to be vigilant. Hallelujah. I believe that they will be better than this. Amen. Okay, okay. We, we're just improving little by little. I, I told you from the beginning that we may not grow at the same pace. What I'm saying, you may not understand. Some may not understand now. Others may understand, but they will misinterpret. But the Bible says, make it plain. Hallelujah. So I'm making it plain to you that Without unity, we are not going anywhere. Without unity, KPGM will not grow. Without unity, I'm telling you, I said this church will never grow. And I'm not just talking about, we have goals. You know, you can grow in numbers, but not in quality. You can have somebody, again, yes, 
Mr. Farmer, come. Again, we can have a farm. Listen carefully. We can have a farm with 10,000 trees on the farm. But the yield will be, let's say, one ton. But you can have a farm with maybe a quarter of that, which will be 2,500 trees. But you see that it will produce three tons or four tons. Why? The problem is that the 10,000 trees might be sick trees. They don't produce anything. The 10,000 trees may be trees that are not well tended, that were, were not well cared for. And as a soil scientist, maybe the, 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 the soils are bad and they need nutrients. So what do you have to do? You need to provide nutrients in the form of what? Fertilizers. If you don't, put, if you don't invest... If you don't do what? If you don't invest in it. So this year, we are ready to invest in you. We are ready to invest. Because if we don't invest, we will have 10,000 trees that are giving us only maybe half a ton. Hallelujah. And the investment that we're talking about is not just anyhow. It should be quality. Listen to me and listen to me very well. That invest will call for pruning. That investment will call for what? Pruning. Pruning will hurt you. But it will make you bear fruit. Better fruit. Hallelujah. We will have to put fertilizer. It will not be at the cost of the tree, but it will be at the cost of the owner. Watch it. Pruning will cut and cost the tree. But applying fertilizer will make the tree laugh. Hallelujah. Because you will be just receiving nutrients and you will be growing nicely. Beloved, some investments would have to be made. But listen to me carefully. The trees, even if we give fertilizer, they have to respond. If they don't respond, if the, if the root system is not right, that is why we need to make sure that the root system is right. That is why the foundation of every Christian must be right. Your foundation is your roots. Because it doesn't matter if the roots are not right, if the roots are not correct, whatever you do to it, you can give it fertilizer, but the tree cannot absorb because the roots are not taking it up. It's work. There's work to be done. There's work to be done. So it can be a tree. We can put off it. That's why the man said, the, 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 the husband's man or the caretaker told Jesus, uh, I mean, according to Jesus' parable, told the owner, let me give you fertilizer for another year. I don't believe that he had not given fertilizer already. He had given fertilizer. That it was not responding. He said, give me one more year. Let me make some more investments. Beloved, it is high time the church of Christ begins to do what Jesus did. I tell you, he taught us, he gave us instructions, and we need to begin to follow those instructions. Because if we don't, we'll have a farm that does not bear fruit. Today's Christian is supposed to know certain things 
and begin to manifest them. If we, if, if the owner that Jesus spoke about will come today, you can imagine You can imagine how many of us will be cut out and bent. Hey, but you see, I've given my life to Christ. And please, don't go there. Don't go there. Listen to what Jesus said. That tree was also in the farm. It was not outside the farm. It, the, the owner planted it himself. So don't tell me what you are telling me. Did I plant it? But he said, we'll give it more fertilizer for another year. If another year it doesn't bear. Amen. It has done. So some investment has to be made for us to grow and grow well. Hallelujah. I know it's not too <laughs> nice. But if we would have to really progress, there are things we have to do. This morning, as I said earlier, my focus is on unity. We have to be united because there, there, is, there are benefits in getting united. It is not for nothing that Jesus wants us to be united or God wants us to be united because he says that if we are divided, we will not stand. It is only in unity that we will stand. Hallelujah. So it's important for us to be united. Amen. Amen. Let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verses 9 to 12. Two are better than one. Because they have a good return for their labor. Two are better than one. Hallelujah. Having a, I mean... Uh, a single mind, I mean like uh, uh, somebody uh, sitting in a group of people and having uh, a mind of his own which is not in league with the others, that, that will not stand. We need to really do what? We need to be together. We need to be united. Let's see what, what, what he says. Verse 10. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. I said, if either of them, one can do what? But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. Beloved, the reason we have to be united is that in the course of the journey, somebody will fall. But when we are united and we have the same mindset, someone will pick that person up. We won't let any one of us fall. We will learn to hold one another. Before we go on, let's go to Exodus 17. I want to show you something. 10 to 13. So this was uh, the, the battle that Joshua fought with the Amalekites. So Joshua fought the Amalekites as Moses had ordered. And Moses, Aaron, and her went to the top of the hill. As long as, Moses is, uh, as long as Moses held up his hands, the Israelites were winning. But whenever he lowered his hands, the Amalekites were winning. So, if Moses is all by himself, then what is going to happen? An old man all by himself. But when they were united, and he had the people around him, the same mindset, they want to win this battle, what they had to do, they have seen the key to their success. And the key to their success was for Moses' hand to be kept up. Mm. 
And therefore, they had whatever they have to do for Moses' hand to stay up, they have to do it. Though it will cost them, though it will cost them, if they want to win, then somebody has to pay the price. So, verse, uh, next verse. When Moses' hands grew tired, they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it. Aaron and Hare held up his hands. Now watch it. Come. Come, watch it. Lift up your hands. Come, the two of you come. This is Moses. Um, no, these guys are tall. Go ahead and sit down. Where you come? You, Moses. Moses, woman Moses, come. Go ahead and sit down. You come. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hallelujah. And you too, you, you too, come. You, come. Yeah. Moses and Aaron are women now. That's the best way I can. But we cross right things into do. Hallelujah. You know, now lift up your hands. If this was Moses, we'll lose. Hallelujah. Thank God she's no Moses. Okay. Now, look at her. Now, let me go up. These cannot hold us up. This probably might because she's also tall. Hallelujah. But the point is that are they also going to go like this forever? There was no chair there. Listen, I said earlier, whatever must be done for Moses' hand to, uh, to be up has to be done. There's no chair. They are, they are short of ideas. They don't know what to do. Because this one can't, you know. So, then they, 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 had a, they made a decision. They had an idea and made a decision. They went and brought a chair. Give me a chair. Yeah. So, they brought a chair. Come, come and sit down. Moses, sit down. Now, once Moses sat down, it's easy for her and it's easy for her. Now hold her up. They don't have to stretch. So they will never, they will not get tired. All that they need to do is to just, they don't get tired. Something has to be done for Moses' hand to be up. Hallelujah. So they can win the battle. If Moses' hands are not kept up, they will lose the battle. If it was, leave her. And you to leave her. No, leave her. Just go this way. If Moses did not have these people, then these hands will be down. They will lose. They will also die. For these ones to live, they have to do something. And there's something was to really help the swan to keep his hands up. Listen, if you want this church to grow, you would have to hold my hands up. Everyone has a role to play. Somebody will have to, because listen, there are times the pastor's hands are weak. Pastors are not superheroes. Hallelujah. They sometimes get drained. The chapters get tired. Let us not make it look like pastors are gods. Hallelujah. Yes. That's the truth. If I, if, I, if I make it look to you like I'm God, I am infallible. There is no... No. Listen, if I do that, that's the beginning of my fall. You need to understand that... The fact, listen to me carefully. The fact that pastors can also make mistakes doesn't mean that I have to make mistakes. Listen to me carefully. I'm giving you something that will help your life. We know 
so we can be cautious. They didn't get it. We know so we can get cautious. You sitting here, you know, come. You know that there is the likelihood, you come. That if we leave you all alone with this girl in the room, something could happen. Because you were a human being before a Christian. Is that not true? The fact, the fact that you became a Christian, so all his feelings are dead. Don't, don't make it look like, what is that? <laughs> Hallelujah. In fancy for sleep on your table, you pass your feelings. So this one is not table. Hallelujah. So what this one, you know, that's what I'm saying that the fact that you know that it's possible means that you have to be wise. So you don't go and hang out with this one in her room or your room. Are you here? What do you think would happen? Something you don't want to say. Hallelujah. Could it happen or not? Ninety-seven percent it will happen. Somebody says ninety-seven percent it will happen. So this one has to be wise. Listen, the fact that I am a pastor doesn't mean that I am really um, 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 immune to certain things. So I have to be wise. That is why you, a woman cannot come to my office all by herself. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hey, uh, so you're going to do something. I'm not going to do anything, but I have to be wise. Listen to me carefully. Yeah, you know, there's a contention, a strong contention about alcohol now. Some people feel that there's nothing wrong as long as you can maintain your... Listen, who measures the limit? Listen, l l let me tell you something. There's something about drugs. The more you have it, the more you want more. So when you are getting to your limit, that is when it's becoming sweet. And you want more. And when you get more, other things begin to happen. By the time you realize, you are doing things you don't have to do. Listen, as a church of Christ, we need to begin to make decisions that there are certain things, not, maybe they are not even sinful in themselves, but they can lead to sin. So you need to begin to protect yourself and prevent it from happening. But that can be done properly in the atmosphere of unity. So that when I am talking about this, it's not from a place of anger, but it's from a place of love. Because I don't want my brother to fall. I want him to grow. If we are going to grow together, we need to hold one another. We need to hold one another. Because if we don't, we'll fall together. Hallelujah. Today, listen, you guys are young. Majority of the church is youth. Don't do what you used to do in the world. Hallelujah. Be wise. I said do what? And we, we are doing this together. We are all, you have to hold my hands up, Moses' hands up. But the fact that I have you to hold my hands doesn't mean that I have to really mess up. I need to know the truth. And I need to walk in the truth. That is why one of the main things that we have to do in this united effort is to help one another to know the word. That is why we have assigned someone to help you so that every day you 
can read your Bible. You may not today understand the motive behind the devotion you do. If I leave this one alone and nobody really, when he reads the Bible, doesn't, he's not, he will not be obliged to read it every day. Although he knows that it's the right thing, if I don't do it, who sees me? Who cares about that? Yeah, God cares about that. And if you are serving God, look, don't behave as if that you are doing everything that God wants you to do. Hallelujah. So you need a brother or a sister to help you. And that is why you need to now, after you've done your devotion, you need to call your brother to share with you. They are all part of the things we have to do to grow. And we have to do it together. Because if one stands alone, as we saw, he will fall. If Moses was all by himself, he couldn't have held his hands up. When the hands got weak, he would have fallen. Moses is one person. You think, oh, but he's one person. Yeah, but he, he was the one keeping the whole, uh, uh, um, the whole Israelites winning the war against the Amalekites. They were fighting well, but the leader's hands was playing a role. And we need to understand that if we can grow, we need solid leadership. It's important. It's crucial. What are you saying? What I'm saying is that we have to grow. But there are certain things that are going to happen throughout the year. Because you need to be fed. You need to be given the right fertilizer. There are some that needs to be pruned. Don't get offended if you are being pruned. Don't get offended. Because when you are pruned, you will even bear better fruits. And even more. But if nobody cares about you, and nobody prunes, you realize that your yields are going down. Every year, every moment of our lives, we need somebody to help us press on. Okay, you guys can sit down. <laughs> Hallelujah. So one on one side, one on the other, so that his hands remained steady till sunset. So Joshua overcame the Amalekite army with a sword. Hallelujah. Listen carefully. Listen carefully. And listen carefully. I want you to understand this. If you, yes, you are fighting a battle, I know. Joshua was fighting a battle. We all know. But we need to really come to an understanding. It is not Joshua's sword that won the battle. It was Moses' hand. You may be in the congregation. Listen to me carefully. You may be in the congregation and you may be growing and you may think that, yeah, me, I have arrived. You see, me, I am this, I am that. And you begin to mess up. Please, be careful Moses doesn't put his hands down. What are you saying? Are you making the pastor a God? No, I'm not making the pastor a God. I'm letting you understand that that is why God gave us pastors. That is why God gave us. You know, 
Go back to Ephesians chapter 4. I'll show you. And then I'll close for today. I don't want to give you too much because I can see that it's difficult to absorb everything. Hallelujah. Uh, no, go to, um, I think, from verse 10 or something. Yeah, okay. So, um, go to 9 and let me see. Or let me look at it here. And then get the right verse. Because I want to see where he said he appointed apostles and prophets and all that. And then read from there. Which verse was that? Or is after, or 11? Okay, yeah, all right. So, and he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. 12. For the ec- For the what? Who are the saints? You are the saints. But he raises leadership to equip you. But can't God do it all by himself? He can do it. But God does everything through his people. That is why you have a pastor. That is why you have an apostle. That is why you have a prophet. That is why you have a teacher. Hallelujah. For the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. And then you go to 13, then the goals are there. Till we all, so I ought to do this till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So we are here to equip you. Hallelujah. Your, pa- your pastors, we don't stand here for nothing. There's a reason we are here. Hallelujah. And I need, listen to me carefully, I need the Aaron's and the hers to hold my hands up. If you have Aaron's and hers who are like Judas. (laughs) Hallelujah. Peter repented. If you have Judas as your Aaron, (laughs) Hallelujah. So I'll say it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you are, look, I know some people will watch this later. But who's, who's, wherever you are, know that that pastor is there for a reason. He is there for a reason. God set them up there to equip the saints. Hallelujah. But the pastors, the prophets, the apostles, the teachers, the evangelists, they need the errands and the hairs to hold their hands up. As the saints fight the battle. The battle of purity which is lost in the church now. The battle of holiness, which is lost in the church now. The battle of righteousness, which is lost in the church now. We have lost because the pastor's hands are not kept up. The pastors have put their hands up. Either they were hungry, or maybe there was nobody to hold their hands up. I don't know exactly what happened, but the pastors have put their hands down. And because they have put their hands down, the congregation is losing. The saints are losing. Hallelujah. Joshua and the Israelites are losing because Moses has put his hands down. Pastors, let's rise because this is for all of us. If our congregation, if the members will grow, we have to equip them. Something has to be done. 
I have to play my part. Hallelujah. And if you are equipping the people, you cannot sleep like the way we sleep. We cannot eat like the way we eat. We need to learn to fight. You know, I'm not even into that now. I'm not, that's not what I'm doing this morning. But, hallelujah. If I don't do what I have to do, hallelujah, I cannot equip the saints. There is work to be done. If we will grow this year, if we will attain these goals, some work has to be done. Everybody will have to play his part. And we have to be united to get this done. I said we have to do what? Be united to get this done. Next week I will continue. Because there are still, we need to look at the early church and what they did. We need to look at Psalm 133 and see what really causes the anointing to flow in a church. Hallelujah. If we can host the Spirit of God here all the time, something would have to be done. We need to be united. In unity lies our strength. I said in unity. This morning we're going to pray. May the blood cover you. The blood of Jesus. I said the blood of Jesus. Cover you this morning. Protect you this morning. From every influence of the enemy. From every attack of the enemy. The blood of Jesus. 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 Protect us all. 